joining me. Um, if anyone has never listened to my podcast before and you're brand new, this is a mental health podcast where each Sunday I talk about uh, a different topic relating to mental health, abuse, trauma. And this week I want to talk about psychological abuse. In the next couple of weeks, I want to be talking about different types of um, psychological abuse and how to recognise that you're being psychologically abused. There are six main types of abuse. First one being psychological, physical, verbal sexual, financial, and also recently um, technological abuse. That seems to be a big one. But this week I want to talk about gaslighting. This is a massive type of emotional abuse. And some of you might have heard about it, some of you might not have, it might be completely new. But I want to start off by saying that emotional abuse or psychological abuse, depending on what you want to call it, is it harms another person's ability to function properly with their mental health. So it's not physical, as everyone um, automatically assumes, oh, it's physical abuse. She's getting abused because it's physical. There's also a psychological side to it, which... Um, is really harmful. I want to talk about gaslighting and gaslighting is a type of emotional abuse that abuser misleads their target making them question their judgments on reality. This leads the victim to believe that they are losing their mind. This can go on for an extended period of time. So abusers love this type of abuse because it leaves no trace or it leaves no physical trace. They tend to start off by using this method um, to gain control of their victim because it's so hard to, it's so hard to work out that it's happening. So instead of, they like to be discreet. So instead of being physical with their victim and showing signs of what they've done, like bruisings, cuts, this one leaves no trace really. And it's very, very hard to to work out that it's going on. So the victim often questions the validity of their own thoughts, perception of reality, and also sometimes memories. So a abuser will distort memories into what they want to believe happened and they'll use that against the victim this can cause confusion loss of confidence and self-esteem so what the main reason for this type of abuse is used for victims lose their self-esteem and their confidence and a feeling of being their own person so it breaks down the victim mentally, um, emotionally, and the end result is that the victim becomes dependent on the abuser. The victim doesn't question this because, obviously, you know, if you're in love with someone, you think, oh, you know, you want what's best for me. You you wouldn't question really, are they capable of doing this? Like, is this, is this a, is this a, is this a thing? It hope it happens mostly it happens mostly in romantic relationships. This is like the the most common. But sometimes it can also happen among friends and family that are also being abusive towards you. I feel like also it's hard to realise with friends and family members because obviously again it's your friends and family and you would feel like that they would want the best for you. I have here 11 
phrases of what an abuser would say to their victim when they're gaslighting. Um, there are a lot more, but these are the most these are the most common type of phrases. So number one, you remember things wrong. So they will take a memory and they will distort it and they will they will constantly say that you're wrong. You remembered it wrong. Number two, I only did that because I love you. So they will act out. They will do horrible, stupid stuff and they will use you as an excuse and say that I, they only did that because they love you, which will make you feel bad and it will make you... Um, It'll make you forgive them for it because you think, oh, yeah, OK, that's that's valid. You love me. OK, yeah. You must have just been doing what's best for me. Number three, you're always twisting things. So they will they will try and break down your mental health by saying that you're always twisting the situation. They won't listen to you. You know, you're you're. Your feelings are invalid, basically. Number four, why are you so sensitive? Again, if you're trying to come up with a solution and you're, you know, you're really upset about this whole situation, um, they will just palm you off, basically. They won't listen to what you've got to say, how you feel, and they won't talk it through. Number five, I just won't say anything at all then. This is... Um, this makes you feel bad again. Because... Um, they'll just stop talking to you. They'll do the silent treatment. And then you'll think... Oh, you know... Shit, that's my bad. Like, he's really upset about this. Oh, I might as well just... I might as well just... Uh, leave it then. And then it never gets solved. The abuser's got away with it again. Number six. Why are you so crazy? So they will all, they will constantly call you crazy. And also they will probably tell other people that you're crazy. Like your friends, your family. This again, this is another way to isolate you. Number seven. You always take things the wrong way. Again, this is not taking your thoughts and feelings into consideration this is making your thoughts and feelings invalid number eight it's always something so they'll always make you believe that you're always moaning at them you're always upset and it'll make you feel bad and it'll make you be quiet about it and it won't make you question anything number nine nothing ever makes you happy so again this is making you feel like shit and making you think oh maybe i am just being a miserable bitch maybe i just need to lay off and again nothing gets solved number 10 don't don't put words into my mouth 11 why are you always overreacting so again it's down to you being overreactive, you being too emotional, you being too sensitive and it makes you question um, how you're feeling or maybe I am overreacting. There, there are a few reasons as to why an abuser likes to do this. So low self-worth, a lot of abusers um, feel bad within themselves um they never feel like they're going to amount to anything um they have a, probably have a lot of mental health issues depression and stuff like that so if they if they have a low self-worth they may see that as a they may see your um they may say see you as a threat and they think well if i can't have that self-worth then you're not having that self-worth and that's why they try and bring you down also, is another one is um, family reasons. So, if the abuser has grown up with parents who are abusive, 
and um, a not very nice environment for a child, their parents may have used these um, types of emotional abuse to communicate with each other. So they may he he or she may be copying their parents um, and using this as a survival mechanism and thinking that this is okay when it's not. This isn't normal um, behaviour. This isn't how you communicate um, healthily with another person. Again, control. So it's all about control. It's about shifting your... It's about shifting your mind into how they want it. Manipulation. So they can use your moment of doubt to change, to have things their way. So your moment of doubt. So when you're doubting yourself in the situation, they use that as a weakness to get what they want. Another thing can be um, mental health disorders. Um, a big mental health disorder is narcissistic personality disorder. I will be covering this in another episode because I have a massive, massive chunk about narcissistic personality disorder. This goes, you can go very, very deep with this narcissistic personality disorder and I, I can't cover it all in one episode. There's a lot of... Um, different kind of bits coming off of it really but narcissistic personality disorder is an unreasonable high sense of their own importance narcissists love to feel important they they love themselves they love the attention they crave the attention of others they live for attention and they also have developed a sense of um a lack of empathy for others so they don't their 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 mindset doesn't process it the same as everybody else's it's not a a normal process so but i will be covering that and narcissistic personality disorder um does link in with a lot of emotional abuse but I will be I will cover definitely cover that in a different different episode for you. There are ways to heal um, from gaslighting. You can practice mindfulness. So take some time out, be fully in the present, um, understand your body, understand your feelings and reconnect with yourself. If you've spent a long period of time being subject to gaslighting, you've probably felt like you've lost yourself in the process. When you finally come out of that, you'll probably realise that you are your own person. You're a whole completely different person and you need to refine yourself. You need to... You need, you need to be independent again. You need to find your independence. You need to find your own voice. If you've had somebody talking for you for the past how many years in a relationship where they've taken everything from you, your mental health, everything, your money, um, been physically abusive, verbally, sexually, everything like that, it's going to take a while for you to reconnect with yourself and learn about you again you know you get your you get your independence back and it's hard it will be hard it will be hard because you you won't know you won't know yourself you would have lost yourself and um so spend some time getting you back um creating a feelings journal um i said this in another episode Creating a feelings journal will help you notice patterns in your thoughts and behaviour. What triggers you. Um, Creating a journal. If you can see it, if you write it down in in that moment, in the spare of that moment, if you write it down how you're feeling, later on you can, once you're, if you're feeling a bit sad, overwhelmed, angry, if you write it down, later on 
you know, when you've calmed down or whatever and you're seeing a different light, you can look back in your journal and you can have a look at your thoughts and behaviours and you may pick up some patterns so you can work with that. Also, be gentle with yourself. So it's okay to make mistakes never blame yourself for not recognizing the gaslighter again you have to it's okay to make mistakes so you you prob you might have been um persuaded to believe that you're not allowed to make mistakes you're under their control and you have to be perfect and whatever says goes and it's not it's not you have your own feelings again and it's okay to be it's okay to make mistakes at the end of the day you are human you are not a robot you are not a scientific test piece for an abuser you are a human you have feelings you have emotions so take some time to reconnect with yourself basically and find yourself and understand it is okay to make mistakes. Nothing's going to happen. If you make a mistake, nothing is going to happen. That, you know, you, you're not... It, it's okay. It's okay. Um, another one is get professional help. So if you feel like you're feeling overwhelmed, um, you feel like maybe this is slightly gone a bit too deep for you to um to treat yourself on your own and use self-care and journals and maybe if you feel like mentally it's a bit too deep it's a bit out of your depth then there's no shame in seeking professional help to manage your feelings and emotions i i've never done it um I have a couple of friends that have done it and there is all there's always been um different responses. I have one friend who absolutely enjoyed it. She got a lot out of it. Um and she feels like she has grown. Um I also have another friend. It wasn't for him. He didn't like it. He felt like he wasn't really getting much out of it. He felt like it kind of stressed him out a little bit more. So, I've never tried it. Maybe one day I'd like to try it. Only trouble is the the money side to it. It can get I can understand it can get pretty hefty in um in pricing. That's the only downside. Also, if you can't get professional help, if you have some friends, a trusted friend, family, speak to them about it. You still have a trusted friend, a trusted family member someone that you can go to and you feel like you're not being judged um one trouble one problem that comes up with emotional abuse is that abusers like to turn their victims against the people that they love so the people that they love like their friends and family um they have a fresh set of eyes they don't live with they don't live with you both they don't live in that um horrible environment they don't see what's going on but if they have a fresh set of eyes sometimes people can pick up and be like hang on a minute that's really wrong that shouldn't be happening and you might not be able to see it but your friends and family may have picked up on it um, and abusers hate this. They hate they hate people going against them. They hate people that um, are trying to undo all their hard work, basically. And if they're trying to show you a sense of clarity, abusers are going to hate this. So they will find a way to um, come up with a plan to turn you against everyone. Everyone that's speaking out, everyone that's trying to help you they will turn you against everyone they want you this comes under um 
this this is jealousy as well i think because this they they don't want anybody they don't want anybody associating with you they want you all to themselves so they know if you're if you're all if you're if they have you all to themselves they know that they can control you easier and if they isolate you from everyone they know that you do not have a choice anymore about leaving them why would you leave the, why would you leave them you haven't got nothing to leave them for if that makes sense you are they are your the abuser is your be or end all and that's the end result you become completely dependent on the abuser completely dependent and this is what makes it so scary because it's so hard to pick up on and it's if you if obviously like if you've if you've never been in a situation like this before you're not gonna you're not gonna maybe realize it's happening and pick up on symptoms and i feel like psychological abuse is the scariest type of abuse because you can abusers can leave no trace so with physical abuse obviously you you can um, pick up on like markings and and you can see what's going on verbal maybe um might be slightly harder but you can you can leave you can leave more traces with verbal i guess it's still still quite hard to pick up on sexual obviously sexual is a big one that's very common um that everyone knows about there's a lot in the media um at the moment and financial 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 can be hard too because um i was gonna say there there is a trace left you know bank statements and stuff like that but a lot of the time there isn't but again psychological i just think it's absolutely awful i think it's so cruel because you're an abuser is getting into your mental health heads like into your mental headspace and for them to be so intelligent for another human to be so intelligent to work out how to do that and to twist someone into what they want that's the thing that scares me the most psychological is definitely the scariest one psychological abuse is from what i remember that's how it started between my mum and her boyfriend he definitely used that as a tactic first to isolate my mum get her on her own make her become completely dependent um he ended up actually getting her onto a lot of drugs to um make her to, to make her quiet basically um and gaslighting from what i remember was the first type of abuse that i picked up on my mom had a lot of mental health problems already so i believe he he used that it was easier for her boyfriend to control control her at a very early stage i didn't again i was a fresh I, I still lived in the same household but i was a fresh set of eyes so my mum was oblivious to it she got to the point where she was oblivious to it she didn't know what was going on but i could see in i could see in with a fresh set of eyes and i'm thinking hang on a minute this isn't right and again this is where it leads to jealousy so i was the one i was the family member like i spoke about a minute ago i was the family member that he was trying to turn my mum against i i was one of the family members because i was seen as a threat 
I, I wasn't playing into his games. I knew what was going on. Um, I knew something wasn't right and I was a threat. So he did everything in his power to break us up, separate us and um, create a wedge. I feel like it didn't really work, to be honest. Um, I don't know why it didn't work, but it didn't work. And I feel like because it didn't work, he went on to more extreme tactics of trying to control my mum. And I think that's when it turned into verbal and physical abuse. So, yeah, the psychological abuse wasn't working. He was getting pissed off about that. And he moved on to more extreme um, ways of controlling my mum. But... Yeah, psychological abuse is definitely a hard one. My mum's boyfriend would use um, a tactic of hiding things from her. So he'd take something of valuable um, importance to her and hide it around the house. And then that would freak her out. My mum, my mum's always been quite religious about God, angels, that type of thing, ghosts. I, she's, yeah, she's she's quite um spiritual, and that would play that would play on her mind because she'd think, oh my God, what's going on here? It would freak her out, and she and she'd think that something maybe um something deeper was happening within the home. Um. But then that moved to, I could see what he was doing. I could I could see what her boyfriend was doing, because the end goal was for me to be blamed, for me to be blamed by it. The end goal was if all these things are moving around, going missing, then it was clearly me because I was the only person in the house apart from the dog, and it's not going to be the dog. And it did start. My mum did start. At, at one point very later on in their relationship she did start questioning me um but she was she didn't believe she didn't really believe it but she was kind of like on the fence she was on the on the line of hmm it could be it, it could be ruby but then no i don't know and she was so confused it got her into such a state where again she was completely in his control he was the be all or end all she would do anything for him he was treated like a god like it may sound deep but everything that was before him her whole life her friends her family everything was gone everything was disappearing at such a alarming rate he was turning his he was turning her friends he was turning her lot her really close friends um against her um creating rumors and yeah just create, creating a wedge really between everyone and i know this sounds really extreme but she ended up what like she loved him so much and ended up like adored him so much and ended up worshipping him so much it was almost she if she had replaced her religious spiritual god for him and i know that sounds so so wacky and so crazy but this is how deep this is how conniving and and how um intelligent this guy was to do that to another person and i believe this was from low self-worth he definitely had a low self-worth he 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 didn't think anything of himself um family reasons as well definitely um he come from a very um messed up family had a very messed up childhood so again 
probably copying his parents because he's been in such a toxic environment for so long so long of his life again manipulation and definitely a mental a mental disorder there was definitely a mental disorder there there could not have there could not have been for someone to do like that to another person for so many years as well like this this went on this abuse went on for about five years five years is a long ass time to plan out to make a plan plan out your scheme and control someone five years that was from when i was just before i turned six up until about 11 years old just before i went into secondary school like that is a long ass time yeah, so that I feel like that was the first part of the of the first part of his plan really. I remember trying to document all the abuse at the time. I'd write I I had a notebook, I think. Oh no, I had um this is going to sound really weird, but I had this really cool ashtray. It had a it was like meant to be an ashtray, but it looked like a really cool pot and it was made out of metal and it was dark blue and it had like these really cool like um really like old school um gold and silver stars on them and it was absolutely lovely and i kept it in my room so my mum gave it to me we didn't have much but all the valuable stuff she gave to me to keep in my room because he never he never ventured in my room that was that's the boundary he never crossed which is odd because he didn't he didn't give a shit about anything else i had an ashtray and um I'd peel off, I had this little notebook and I'd peel off the notes out of my notebook. Because I used to leave my notebook laying around and I was scared that he was going to see it. So I'd peel off the, the notes and stick them in this ashtray and put the lid on the top and just leave it in my room. But one day I come home and I think previously the night before I'd documented a lot of um, physical abuse between my mum and her boyfriend. I'd witnessed a lot so I wrote it down. But I come home from school and it was it was gone um and i'm i'm still not sure who who got rid of it whether it's my mom or him but again um any type of evidence is gonna make them angry they're gonna they're gonna uh they're not gonna like that because evidence they evidence is against them if they they know that any type of evidence against them is gonna work really badly against them because if 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 you as a victim do eventually manage to make it out and realize what's going on and you bring that to court they're fucked that's uh, their 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 sanity their life um what they get out of it is their their end game you know, there's even to that at that point when they're abusing you, they're still worrying about getting caught. They're still worrying about future. Um, what's what's how is it going to impact them? They don't care how it's going to impact you. They just they're just worried about how it's going to impact them, and getting caught and having to deal with the consequences and being being found out. And that's really sad. Like you're just a. I know it's going to sound horrible, but you're just a pawn. You're just a pawn in their game. They're just a, you're just a pawn in their game so they can abuse you and get what they want out of you, use you and then maybe eventually just kick you to the curb and then you've got to scoop up all the little pieces that have been broken all the tiny little fragments like dropping a cup or a bowl or something on the floor and it splinters into tiny tiny little pieces and it's really really hard to um, hoover up and you've got to scoop all that up, all them tiny little fragments, all them tiny little pieces, and be expected to piece every single little tiny, tiny little fragment together with glue. Keep that in your head and move on with it and deal with it. And it's not going to work. If your mental health, if your brain has taken a battering, I'm not talking about physically, but mentally, if, you're, if your head's been taken a battering, for so long every single day for five years and probably not just psychological abuse probably physical verbal sexual financial even technological then you're not going to be in a good place and that's why i hate 
hey, hey, psychological abuse, because I just think it's so evil, it's so dirty, it's such a dirty play. I don't know, it's just such an evil way, I think. So, I'm going to leave it there. I had a replay back on the previous episode, and I sound absolutely disgusting, and I really apologise about that. I did think about deleting it, but then I was thinking, actually... Um, I said at the start that this is going to be my journey, so I feel like keeping it raw, keeping it documented, not editing anything out. I do try not to edit as much as possible out because I want to keep it, I want to keep it raw. I don't want it to be fake. I want this to be real and I want you guys to have a proper, you know, a proper take. I want you guys to have proper advice. I don't want it to be all again fake and lovely and roses and sugar coated because it's not i understand it's not and i hate listening to these podcasts that are just i can't connect with a lot of podcasts when it comes to abuse podcasts because i find abuse podcasts a lot of the people that make them are um, and I know that this isn't this isn't no dig towards anyone. This isn't, but I feel like it's a lot of people, professional people. They've gone to uni, they've studied, they know a lot about what they're talking about because they've studied it for three years. But I feel like there's not a lot of people out there who are podcasting who have actually been through it and they've seen it and they've seen the raw, the raw shit and the the consequences of um people's horrible actions and that's why i like to keep it i like i like to keep it raw i don't want to yeah i don't want to keep i don't want to be fake for you guys i want it to be real so i am going to keep it and i want to use i want to listen back to that last episode maybe in a few months and be like damn and hopefully see an achievement and look back on and see how how well I've progressed maybe I haven't maybe I'm just maybe I'm just, this would just be a flop but we shall see so thank you guys for um for listening I will be uploading again next Sunday have a good morning for October we cannot complain so thank you very much for listening